I'd like to welcome you to my presentation titled Complementing Black Box Acceleration with Circuit Information. My name is Nicolas Delessé and I'm currently doing a PG at Ghent University under my promoters Yuri Zivrote and Dieter Fokonje. In a multi-physics problem, an FSI problem for example, typically black box solvers are coupled with each other using some kind of coupling scheme. This presentation will explain how we can include some physical information or some prior information inside of this coupling scheme. I'll start by giving a short motivation in which I try to explain how, why this is useful and what the advantages are. Then I will give a high level procedure of how this can be achieved. And finally, I will discuss which building blocks would be necessary with and precise in order to achieve this before giving a conclusion. To be clear, I didn't implement the method yet inside of Precise, but I will explain what would be necessary in order to do this. So if we look at the big picture of Precise, what I will focus on is the coupling schemes and I will neglect communication, data mapping and time stepping for the moment. Alright, so let's start with the motivation. If we consider two black box solvers, a CFD solver and a finite element solver. Um, we need an equilibrium at the interfaces and this is achieved using a coupling scheme. As I said before, for the moment we neglect mapping, time stopping or communication. If we consider the example I've, which you can see here, which is a flexible tube with an incompressible liquid inside of it, where a pressure pulse is applied at the inlet, then uh, the following happens, the pressure pulse travels throughout the tube, uh, resulting in deformation of the tube. Alright, so what will I not talk about? Well, I will not talk about parallel coupling, but I will focus on serial coupling. And whatever I tell today can be easily translated to parallel coupling as well. I will not talk about relaxation or idle relaxation, fixed relaxation or idle relaxation, but I will talk about more advanced and more capable quasi-Newton algorithms. The quasi-Newton algorithms which are currently available within Precise are IQNILS, also known as Anderson Acceleration, and IQNIMPJ, also known as Generalized Probe. The method I want to explain to you today is IQNILSM. It's a mouthful, but it actually stands for Interface Quasi-Newton Method with Approximation of the Inverse Jacobian from a least squares model and surrogate model. So the least squares model is the black box part, and the surrogate model, that's the physical information we want to introduce. In the precise documentation, it says that the goal of Quasi-Newton Methods is to estimate the Jacobian of the coupling. This is actually needed because the coupling schemes use some kind of newton raster method in order to find the solution. This can be explained easily in one dimension. There we have an unknown function i is f of x and the root which you want to find here indicated in blue. Starting from initial guess x0 and calculating the corresponding value and also the derivative, we can use the tangent line to find a new guess which is closer to our final solution to it of this function. And with this method you can continue until you reach the final root. If you're sufficiently close to the root with your initial guess or just sufficiently close, um, this will converge in a quadratic manner, which is very good. However, we need the derivative in order to do so. And in our case, this will typically be unknown. If this is the case, we can use an approximated derivative instead of the real one. Otherwise, the method remains the same. For the initial derivative, we have to assume some value. But for the second one, we can actually use the secant line between this point and the previous one. This secant line will be a quite good approximation of the real derivative. If we translate this to n dimension, then the problem becomes a little more tricky. Because there we have an equation which uses matrices and vectors. So here the x vector has n dimensions. We have the Jacobian matrix, which is a matrix of n on n values. We have the x vectors, which are column vectors of n elements. And we have the residual vector, which also has n elements. So here the Jacobian is also, can also not be determined 
that we require n squared values in order to know it fully compared to the one value we needed in one dimension. So this problem becomes a little more tricky. But here also we can use an approximated Jacobian. And that's where the quasi newton method comes in. So that's the goal, to estimate this Jacobian. And this is done based on previous solver evaluations, similarly to what we have seen in one dimension. So I can we can represent this by this black box where we just know in and outputs and we try to know what's going on inside of that black box using these in and outputs. However, often we have some information about the black box problem, which is known from another source. And now we can actually see this as a similar box where we can more easily understand what's going on inside. So where we can more easily determine the Jacobi, basically. And this can be a coarser mesh, for example, which solves much faster, or an analytical model, which still capsule, captures the main behavior of the real problem, or a simulation with one dimensional less, for example, this 2D axiometric simulation to model the full uh, three dimensional tube, or finally, also previous time steps. So the previous time step is also a very good approximation of what of the Jacobian of the current time step. And this actually boils down to reuse as is also used in other quasi-Newton methods, but it fits perfectly inside of this method as well. Okay, so now that I've explained the motivation of why we can do this, I'll guide you through a high-level procedure of how this can be achieved. Consider we have a new time step. We have previously calculated other time steps as well. The first thing we'll do is do a surrogate calculation. Let's consider once more the three-dimensional tube with pressure pulls. Then, for example, we can use this 2D axisymmetric simulation as a surrogate model. So we have a surrogate flow solver, which calculates the flu, um, this 2D flow domain, and a surrogate structural solver, which calculates the 2D structure domain. And then there's a coupling scheme which actually couples these two surrogate solvers. From this surrogate calculation, we'll obtain a Jacobian, which is used inside of that coupling, and also a solution, which can then be used as initial values for the real calculation. And then the modes which are calculated um, using a black box approach in this real calculation can be added to our initial Jacobian in order to accelerate the coupling. And then the procedure continues as usual. In another example where we want to use reuse, for example, here it's a bit more special because you don't really have to calculate any surrogate model. The surrogate model is just your previous time step. So we can use the previous solution and Jacobian as initial values and start from there and complement those with uh, modes you find in your actual solution, just like in existing quasi newton methods. But this also fits perfectly inside of the framework. But how is this now done in practice? Well, the Jacobian residual multiplication is done with a QR decomposition. This means that no explicit inverse Jacobian has to be constructed or stored. And this means that the memory requirements are linear. To make this book more visual, in IKM VJ, the entire Jacobian matrix has to be stored, which equals n squared values. However, in IKM ISM, only a few matrices with columns um, of n elements um, have to be stored. These number of columns will be a lot less than the number of degrees of freedom, so the requirement for storage is only proportional to n and not n squared. This is a very important benefit. How is this then achieved in practice? These different comp contributions from the different Jacobians? Well, this is done by splitting the residual. What's the residual? Well, that's this f of x. Uh, which we saw before in this n-dimensional formulation. This residual is first split in two parts. Uh, the residual covered by the second Jacobian, uh, which is uh, low rank, so it only covers part of the residual. And then there is another part which is not covered by the second Jacobian. And that part is split again in two parts. One part which is covered by a surrogate Jacobian and a part which is again not covered by the surrogate Jacobian. For the parts covered by it, the circuit Jacobian, we of course use that Jacobian, and for the other part, we have to use the fixed point Jacobian. 
right? So this is on a high level. Let us now look to a small example of the improvement this method can achieve. Uh, here we'll look at the first time step of a 2D axisymmetric calculation. You can see the convergence on the left plots. In blue, you can see the convergence for the IQNI LS algorithm, which is already imprecise. And in orange and red, you can see the convergence rate for um, the IQNI LSM algorithm, uh, where a 1D or 2D course surrogate is used. So for the orange one, we first solve a analytical model uh, in one dimension and use the values we obtained from there as initial solution and also as initial Jacobian. And in red, we first do a 2D core simulation and there we use also the solution we get as initial solution and Jacobian as initial Jacobian. I can see that the convergence in this first time step improves a lot. However, we have to take into account that the additional solving of these circuit models will also incur some costs. And this is shown in the right graph where we can see the convergence of these circuit models. However, it's important that the circuit models are a lot cheaper and that's also the case. So in the 1D uh, case, the cost of such a circuit iteration is only 2% of an actual iteration and in the course model it's, on, it's 11%. So overall, there is still an important gain in speed. All right, so now I've explained the motivation and the procedure of this new algorithm. I'll talk about the building blocks which are required in order to implement this method inside of Precise. First of all, there is a new acceleration block required. So a new coupling scheme. And basically, this is already sufficient for the reuse circuit model. So nothing else is needed in order to be able to use this uh, new algorithm. And the main advantage there will be the linearly scaling memory requirements. If we want to use a surrogate model um, which uses, for example, a core circuit, then there is a uh, additional communication capability necessary, which allows to uh, exchange residual and displacement data between the surrogate and the actual coupling scheme. So this is sufficient for using coarser surrogate models. In the case where we want um, an, a smaller number of dimensions for our surrogate model, an additional mapping block is required, which maps between 3D and 1D in both directions and in 3D and 2D in both directions. But I saw it's already on the roadmap um, for precise version 3. Once this is in place, everything is that is, would be needed in order to do this for the icon LS algorithm is provided. All right, in conclusion, the icon LS algorithm can improve convergence in difficult cases uh, using a surrogate model which complements the black box methods which are already in precise. For implementing this in precise, there would be a one-time development effort for the reuse circuit model, but only an acceleration block would need to be modified, with the main advantage that there is a linearly scaling memory requirement, and actually the result is a hybrid version between icon ILS and icon MVJ. It's also important to note that this wouldn't uh, require any additional effort from the user in order to use this algorithm. For the other types of surrogate model, they would require a bit more development effort, but also from the user in order to set up these surrogate models and so on, which require a bit more effort. If you want more information about this algorithm, how it works in practice and uh, the mathematics behind it, I would like to refer you to uh, my paper that got recently published in Computers and Structures, where you can find the link here. All right, thank you a lot for your attention so far. And uh, I would only now like to acknowledge the funding I've received from the Research Foundation Flanders, FWO, as part of the Contact Lab project. Thanks again for your attention, and you can always contact me by email uh, to have more information or to ask me a question. Thanks.